every good morning starts with a weasel. Absolutely. Let's do this, man. So we're still in a hotel. We should be getting the truck back today, though. So yes, another day in the motel, but we should be out of here first thing tomorrow morning, maybe even tonight yet. The truck is supposed to be ready today. I told them I've only got this motel for another night and then after that, what is going on with my beard? Uh, I think, you know what, I'm just gonna shower. That'll fix it. But uh, uh, after tonight, this whole hotel is booked for some reason. Tonight's a, today's a Monday, so tomorrow's a Tuesday. The whole hotel is booked on a Tuesday for the rest of the week. So some sporting event must be going on or something must be going on around here. So after tonight, I don't have a place to stay. I'll have to, you know, look around for other places. But they told me that my truck will be ready today yet, so... Hopefully I won't have to go and scramble to try to find another hotel to stay in tonight yet, because that would be inconvenient. But let me get all showered up here, and then uh, update you on everything that I know. All right, Diesel. It's time to go get our truck, man. They say the truck's ready to be picked up. We're about to walk over there and pick her up. It's about 8.30 at night, so uh, I got no load for tomorrow yet, but I do have to check out of the motel tomorrow morning. I paid for tonight, so I'm going to sleep in the nice, comfortable hotel bed tonight yet, and tomorrow morning we'll uh, go and get our trailer from Volvo's yard and wait for a load. Hopefully all my problems are fixed. Hopefully all the problems are fixed. Let's go see what the damage is. Not looking forward to that part, but I am looking forward to getting my truck back. All right, Diesel. All right, come on. It's time to go get the truck. Come on, buddy. Do not disturb. Okay. Come on. Let's do it. It's about a half hour walk. I hope you guys can see this. This is the palm tree I was talking about. And the fake grass. <laughs> Told you. Palm tree. And fake grass. In Canada. How about that, eh, Diesel? And they thought I was lying. We got palm trees up here. So I just got my truck back. We'll go over everything in the morning during daylight of what they all fixed, but we're about to start it up for the first time. Diesel's already in here. Diesel, my heart's racing. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right, no engine light, no other lights. Gonna wait for the air dryer to pop off. Okay, we're waiting for that sound, right? As soon as the, the air here gets up to 120. Wait for it, wait for it. There it is. The air dryer is working good. I'm a happy man. I'm so happy to have this thing back. Oh, my battery light's on. My battery light just came on. Oh, and it went off. And it came back on. Oh no. No, 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 no. And it went off. Is it gonna come back on? Looks like it's staying off. Let's check my battery here. This goes for my gauges. Battery. It's getting 14.2 volts. I don't know if you can see that or not. All right, well. 
just gonna want to ask him about that battery light and uh oh there it is again okay i'm gonna go and ask him about that before i leave here all right so that was an easy fix thank god <laughs> When they, they put a new alternator on here, right? I'll, I'll go over all the things we got new, but I'll do that in the morning once there's light out and I can show you. But, oh, there's the air dryer again, working good. So uh, the, they replaced my alternator. And when they had replaced it, the two wires that connect onto the alternator look exactly the same. And I guess they had taken the alternator off, went for lunch or coffee, and then came back, put the alternator back on, and the wires got mixed up, which isn't a big deal, but it just causes the battery light to come on like that flash on and off they said if the battery light were to stay on we'd have more of a problem but since it was flashing it was most likely just those wires so they switched those wires for me here right outside and it's all fixed now it's beautiful 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 i'm a happy trucker wish me luck no more problems for a few months I need to pay this back. Let's go back to the hotel. I'll uh, talk to you guys a little bit more there. <sighs> Don't judge me. I need something to pick me up right now. And I can't have a beer, so. I'm gonna have a Pepsi. <sighs> I gotta work early in the morning. So, Pacific Coast Heavy Truck Group. Great people there. I would recommend any of you, if you need work done, uh, they're located uh, pretty much at the border of Langley and Surrey here in British Columbia. Uh, I still call it Vancouver, but let's go over what we all did. We'll go over the cost today, and I'll try and show you as much as I can tomorrow once the sun is up. I already have a new load. I lost the load that I was supposed to pick up today, but I got a new one. Got to pick it up tomorrow, and it goes to Calgary as well. So we'll be able to test this truck out over the mountains. Tomorrow. Okay, so the original thing I brought it in for this is called job number one was the air dryer. So air dryer replacement, air dryer. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's see, oh, corrosion. What they say? So they removed electrical connector and airlines. Removed and replaced air dryer assembly. Cleaned with thread lock. Installed fittings. Noticed corrosion on pin in connector. Removed one pin repinned the air dryer itself remember we're all we're talking canadian dollars here right now okay so for the majority of you americans watching these prices sound a little higher to you uh take like i don't know 10 percent off or something for american uh, okay so here we go labor for that was 318 dollars the air dryer was 417 dollars uh, the cable terminal another 29 29 dollars <clears throat> so the total job there for the air dryer came out to $765.03. The next job was, oh, uh, what is this? Da, 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 da. Air leak. I told them to check for any air leaks on my truck and they found one air leak uh, says, use pneumatic inlet to put air into tanks till air dryer purges. Sprayed down all airline components, found trans 90 degree fitting leaking uh, and compressor pneumatic inlet Brake air valve out of seat. Reseated, does not leak anymore. Replaced trans air fitting, that's the transmission air fitting inlet. Built air, resprayed and checked for leaks, no leaks. So they fixed those air leaks for me. Uh, blah, blah, labor, $159. Uh, that little uh, part that they needed was $40, total of $199.19. The next job that they did on the truck. Uh, when I brought it in, my TCS light was on. Check and advise. They said, hooked up to Bendix, saw the steering angle sensor, uh, read 360 degrees at zero degree position, recalibrated. So they had to recalibrate uh, my steering angle sensor. Cost one hour, uh, cost $159 in labor. That was it, no parts. <clears throat> Stay with me, people. Grab a coffee. We'll be here a while. <clears throat> the next thing. Uh, job number four. Engine light was on. Check and advise. Diagnose. This is quite a bit here. <clears throat> quite a bit of... Okay. Checked and printed codes. Found a lot of codes active on all control modules. 
Most are losing communication or related to data link. Diagnosed active NOx code. CBR applies for this code. They're speaking French to me here. I don't know. It's, I'll just keep reading. Need to run NOx conversion. Truck won't start. Checked schematic for HD OBD connector. I hope you know what I'm talking about because I don't know what this <laughs> Both DL1 and DL2 show 60 to 62 OHMS of resistance. Checked gear selector connector, also not communicating. Pins are clean and intact. Notice engine harness missing loom at front end. Wires did not look rubbed through. Not, do not look rubbed through. Battery charge is 10 volt. Put on charge, performed complete shutdown on truck with night switch and restarted. Laptop. Hooked up to PTT and all indirect codes went inactive. Unit now detected N and allowed me to start the engine. Engine started, but started to develop a loud fuel knock. They didn't tell me what, okay. Uh, noticed DCT cylinder, one fuel injector offset. Learning code is present, inactive of 24 counts. Removed turbo actuator and started truck. Runs great. Removed coolant. I didn't know you did that. I just replaced that coolant. That was brand new from the other day. <laughs> okay. Removed turbo actuator. Checked arm travel with foreman. Good travel. Pinned into place. Followed calibration steps and calibrated actuator. Actuator. Put coolant back in. Okay, so same cool. Put it back in. So that was a lot of jib jabber. Uh, pretty much what they're saying is that my turbo actuator seized in the shut position. I think I told you about this yesterday already, right? And th that was the process that they took to find that. And that was a like that was very tech speak. But uh, they pretty much, they, uh, they fixed it. They fixed it. So, a filler cap. That was for uh, my radiator or my, my coolant cap. Needed to be replaced. It wasn't sealing. $42.78. Labor on this job was $656. The turbo actuator itself was $1,398.51. Oh, you guys still with me? You guys still with me? Uh, there's a dirty core, uh, no, clean core charge, $385, -da -da -da, but I got that money back because they sent it in. A gasket, $5.44, so that job, the engine light, the engine light uh, was $2,102.73 to diagnose and fix all the problems that the engine light was. All right, let's hey, job number five. You still with me? Grab another coffee. Here we go. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, this was just ensuring that my speed uh, was limited to 105 kilometers an hour. Oh, they just double checked everything because in order to cross into Ontario and Quebec, my truck has to be limited at 105 kilometers an hour. Uh, da, da, da. There's all that, all that. This had to do with my radio, I think. It has an hour of labor, $164. That was a smaller thing. My, my radio was... Uh, locked out it locks me out if you're a volvo driver you know every time your battery dies some your truck thinks that you're you're someone's trying to steal the stereo so it locks the stereo and i didn't have the code and the only way to get the code was to go into the computer and that's what this was all about and while they were in there they just made sure everything was up to par so that was an hour of labor uh, da, da, da. job number six all right avr and cable service Performed AVR checklist on this unit. Need to replace all four batteries. Removed and replaced all four batteries. Notice ground lead for inverter on battery post has very poor crimp. After battery replacement, finished AVR checklist shows a poor charging alternator. Battery and night switch connections were cleaned. That was, uh, so they did an AVR, pretty much they cleaned out all of my battery components and all my lines and everything and got all the corrosion out of there. Labor, $397. Uh, four new batteries, $374.56. So what was my batteries, replacing my batteries pretty much and cleaning my whole system. That was $772.06. Job number seven, inverter cable repair. Repaired cable by exposing new wire, crimped new eyelet connector, shrink tube around. I didn't know they did that. 
or maybe they told it to me, but you know, there's like eight jobs here, whatever, maybe more. So I probably missed it. That one anyways was $81.59, $79.50 labor, $2 for a part. Let's keep going, shall we? We're at nine minutes. Job number eight, replace failing alternator. <clears throat> Got a new alternator today. Removed belt and replaced alternator. Pulley was transferred and torqued to spec after truck was started. Noticed vehicle ECU needs maintenance. Hooked up PTT. Vehicle code was cleared. Radio code doesn't was not cleared. Radio is locked out. Oh yeah, that's what I was telling you about there. Uh, okay, so here the labor was $159. Alternator was $431.87. Total for this job was $590.87. There's another page. <clears throat> this is just the end. We're at the end now. So the total cost for the last four days in the shop. Total parts, $2,742.47. Total labor, $2,092. No, $2,092. Uh, shop supplies, $167.36. Subtotal, $5,001.83. And then taxes on top of that, total, final work order total, $5,263.64. <laughs> so the majority of the video today was me just explaining how I spent my money that I don't have. How I spent Visa's money. <laughs> and I gotta pay that back in the next game. But, uh... Thankful for technicians and mechanics that know what they're doing, because I don't know. But that's all fixed. Uh, I still have to pay for my hotel, so remember that's on top of that. That'll be four nights at about 150 bucks a night. I think it's 145 bucks a night. So that's what, 290 for two. $580 is what I'm expecting. So about $600 for the hotel too. So that on top of the 5200 and we're looking at close to six thousand dollars in total a little under six thousand for this week a six thousand dollar weekend and that's not including my last weekend which was an eight hundred dollar weekend and that's also not including the weekend before that which was a three thousand dollar weekend so in total in the last three weeks i spent five six seven eight thousand nine thousand just about nine thousand dollars on my truck in the last three weeks it's been a good month Good month. It's been a good month for the credit card companies, to tell you that much. Jeez. So, we'll be paying that back over the next while. We're going to make sure that uh, we keep this truck moving. I'm going to work hard. And uh, we're going to... Our head's still above water. We're still doing fine. You know? Still got my weasel. Got my wife back at home who loves me. Got a good family. A bunch more dogs at home yet that love me too. Got a mom and dad that love me. My sisters that love me. And that's what's important. Money comes and it goes. And then it goes again. And then sometimes it comes back. Sometimes you got to work a little bit harder for it. But we'll get it back. We'll get it back. We'll, we'll get back on our feet. Uh, this didn't knock us down. It sort of knocked the wind out of me a little bit. But uh, I'm still on my feet. You know what? I never give up. I will get back up again and we'll conquer this. All right, so that's the video for today. Uh, tomorrow I'll go to the truck actually and show you all the new parts that I can, that I can see. And we'll go pick up our new freight, which we gotta pick up just a little bit east of here and that's going to Calgary. So we'll be going over the mountains. It's that same load that we took about a month or a month or two ago. It's that freight that they want washed. I gotta bring it to Calgary and then I gotta go through that automatic wash. So that should be fun. At least you got a truck wash out of it, right? <laughs> I got nothing else to say. Let's go to bed. Actually, let's finish my Pepsi. This one, Pepsi makes me feel better. I don't care what you say. I earned this one. Mm. Mm. We'll see you tomorrow.